C++ data types. So, we know that while doing programming in any programming language you need to use various variables to store information and variables are nothing but reserved memory locations to store values. This means that when you create a variable you reserve some memory space in the memory. Now, what is happening whenever you are defining variables the nomenclature of the variable is purposeful for the programmer for the coder, but the, when the program will be executed then there will be no trace of these variable names against each and every variable the memory space whatever is going to get allocated that will be the main issue during the execution. And how many bytes of memory spaces will be occupied against one variable name that will be decided depending upon the data type. So, you may like to store information of various data types like character, white character, integer, floating point, double floating point boolean etcetera. Based on the data type of a variable the operating system allocates memory and decides what can be stored in that reserve memory locations. So, variable will be containing data depending upon the data type of the variable memory spaces are getting allocated and it will also decide the size of the memory block and the values will be stored in those memory locations. So, this is our C++ data types and there is a respective hierarchy that in which uh, what are the different categories we can divide this C++ data types. The first one is the derived data types we are having array, we are having function, pointer, reference and so on. Here we are having the built in data types like your integral types where you will be having integer and character, the floating types where you will be having float and double and this is our void void means it is returning nothing. So, that is a void data type. So, void means nothing actually and in this case in case of C++ data type user defined data types will be like your structure, union, class, enumeration and so on. C++ offered the programmers a rich assortment of built in as well as user defined data types. Following table lists the list down the 7 basic C++ data types whatever is available. So, boolean will be written as bool in our uh, C++ coding as a keyword, character will be expressed as care, integer will be expressed as int and these are the other uh, respective keywords whatever you are going to use against these data type names. Several of the basic data types can be modified using one or more of these type modifiers. So, we can have this one signed, we can have signed int or unsigned int. So, this is the type modifier in that case. So, we can also have the unsigned short and long. In case of signed int, we can go for some explanation on this. We are having, we know that in case of integer data type, that slide will be coming next. We are going to allocate uh, 4 bytes of memory spaces against the integer data type variable. So, 4 bytes means 4 into 8 32 bits in case of signed int or signed integer the first bit will be reserved for the sign if the bit is 0 the number is positive if the bit is 1 then the number is negative because it is signed integer and rest 31 bits will be holding the magnitude part of the number. But in case of unsigned int all the 32 bits will be holding the value for the number. So, in case of unsigned int we cannot express any negative value. So, short and long are the other type modifiers. So, here we are having the respective types, here we are having the uh, typical bit width. So, it is 1 byte means 8 bits in this way you can you can easily guess and here there is a typical range of the values. So, if you consider character, so it is occupying 1 bytes of the memory space against those variables which will be having the type character and it can be extended, the value can extend from minus 128 to plus 127 because 8 bits can have 2 to the power of 8 that means 256 number of combinations. So, from minus 128 
to 0 and then 0 to 127 plus 127 is the total range. So, in this way if you go on calculating we are having 256 number of combinations otherwise if you consider only the positive part only the positive representation that is unsigned it will be ranging from 0 to 255 again you are going to going to get back your 256 number of combinations. So, in this way we are go going to get this we are having one data type that is a bool data type and that will be also occupying one byte in the computer's memory. So, this is this is the respective list whatever you are having and the ranges are there and the respective sizes are there. So, here we are having float that is a 4, 4, 4 bytes, we are having this double that is 8 bytes, long double 8 bytes, there is a white character it will be of 2 or 4 bytes accordingly. So, here we are having one program where we have written the size of car, size of int they have got written. We know the size of is nothing but one operator and that has been applied on the data types. So, let me let me uh, show you that what will be the output of this program here. So, if you run this respective program here is the output for us. So, size of character will be 1, size of int will be 4 in this way we are going to get this one. So, we are having this size of character int size of short long and so on. So, now here what about the data type sizes whatever you have mentioned that is available in say dev c++ in your gnu c++ and so on, but those who are working with turbo c++ having got the version lesser than uh, turbo c version 3.0 in those cases those uh, for the compilers the compiler will produce 2 bytes the memory space which is going to get allocated 2 bytes of memory space against the integer. But if you go for turbo c uh, editor turbo c++ editor version 4.0 or 4.0 onwards you will be going to get 4 bytes against integer getting occupied during the runtime of the code obviously in the computer's memory. So, in this way we have explained what is the data type and what are the different minimum and maximum values and what is the type modifiers and what are the number of bytes are getting occupied during the runtime of the code against the respective variables defined under one data type. Thanks for watching this video.